All right, as mentioned, here's 8-1, basically day two. Uh, we are going to use the geometric mean again, and that's why we spent that day working on it. But in this particular case, the geometric mean is going to be a shortcut. By no means do you have to use the shortcut. But it is for this particular figure that you see on top here. With You can kind of see three triangles in there, I hope. I have drawn them out separately on the bottom here for you so that you can see all three. So obviously this one on the right over here is the biggest one. And then there's kind of the medium-sized one that's in the middle. And then the small one is right here. But what I've done at the bottom, you notice, is I've turned them all so they're facing the same way. So they look the same. What I'm going to do is prove to you that all three of those triangles would have to be similar. Because, now this is important, when you, if you're going to write this in your notes, write down that this could be the angles that are in there. This doesn't have to be the angles that are in there. I'm kind of giving you some numbers to work with so you can see it. So, for example, this could be a 40 degree angle. I mean, it could be a 20, it could be a 30, it could be a 22 and a half, who knows? But 40 is a possibility. And then if we're looking at this triangle here, you should be able to tell me where, what that angle is where the blue dot I just put is. Well, if 90 is in the bottom corner here, that's 40. How much is left over? Yeah, 50. And so that's not too hard. So that could be the angle. So that could be 50. All right. Well, if that's the case, this one here is also 90, right? If we're looking at it that way. So then what's that one where I just put the blue dot? Well, the whole thing's supposed to be 90, right? And if that much over there is 50, there's 40 left over. And then if you're looking at this small triangle, you got 40, you got 90, and then that blue dot's got to be 50. So do you see how these triangles actually do have to be similar by angle angle? They really have no choice. And so this very specific picture is what we're going to be taking a look at today. I'll show you what I would sometimes refer to as the slower method, but it works. Draw out the triangles every time and put in the information. But I'm going to give you a much quicker way of doing it. All right. So let's say, again, those were just some for instances. Now you can see that they are similar. That would work no matter what number I started with. But what if I told you, for example, and this I would write in if I were you, if that was 4 and that was 6 and I wanted you to tell me that. You might think that that's not enough information. But it actually is. And I'm going to show you again. I kind of call it the slower method. That's probably not the best terms I could use for that. But it's the one where you have to draw it out. And I think that takes time because obviously I have them on here for you. <laughs> Imagine if you had to sit there and draw them out every single time you had a problem like this. Uh, if you plan on using the triangles, maybe just use your notes and just write it in very lightly when you use it, and then you can erase it every time. So basically what you're going to do is every place you see AB, you're going to put 4. Well, where's an AB? Well, here's one. So I'll put a 4. Are there any more ABs on my triangles down at the bottom? No. Wherever I see a BD, I'm going to put 6. Do we have any BDs down here? Here's one. Right there. Any more BDs? No. Wherever I see a CB, I'm going to put x. So here's x right there. Any more cbs? Oh, yep. It actually ends up on the bottom. And are there any more? Uh, basically, the only other thing I could do is write down that ad is how much? 10. And where's ad? Well, way over here. So as far as this problem goes, I've pretty much filled in everything we know, right? This is what we've got. Do we have enough information in at least two of the triangles to try and figure out x? We do. Basically, if you look at these first two triangles, we have enough information there. So this triangle at the end in this problem, really not very helpful. Okay. But here we could look, and now remember, these are similar. And so we can set up a proportion. And the nice thing about triangles, remember, is you have so much freedom. For example, maybe I started by going this x right there over that 6. So, OK, x over 6 equals. And if I do that, what should follow? 4 over x. Does that setup look vaguely familiar from what we did the other day? Yeah, remember the geometric mean was in there twice, and that's where x happens to be. All right. But let's solve this one before we get too far into that. So what do we got there? x times x, x squared, 6 times 4, 24. Now, how do we get rid of that square again? Square root. And if we're just talking the algebra, yeah, that houseifies, it would be, now if I let, asked it for an exact, you would just leave it like that. Uh, is that one that comes out perfect? Is that a perfect square? No. So we'll say approximately, well, what is the square root of 24? About, uh, I would guess, 4.9. So somebody figure that out. I'll be right back with you.
All right, sorry for that interruption there. Did anybody get the square root of 24? 4.9, okay. So that's if basically you want to draw out all three triangles. What I'm going to show you today is how we can use shortcuts. In this figure, there are three places that is a geometric mean possibility. One place is where we just put x right now in this last one. It's kind of, I call it inside or in the middle, whatever you want to call it. If it's inside, like this problem right here, here's x inside, it is the geometric mean, I look at it this way, of the two smaller portions of that side. And if I did say it's the geometric mean of 4 and 6, wouldn't you set up something similar like this? From what we learned the other day? And isn't that just what I set up when I drew out the triangles? So it's the same thing. So this middle one is the geometric mean of the two smaller portions of that longest side. Okay, so that's one spot that you can find the geometric mean. Another spot is actually if it's over here. That's another spot that you can find the geometric mean. You don't necessarily have to write all this down. You're going to see it when we do some more examples. So maybe you can just follow along for now. Do you agree that the first one we had was inside and that one's most definitely outside the triangle? Whenever it's outside, again, that's here's one of the spots in the middle here. Here's another spot. All you have to do is take that little piece closest and the whole thing, which is 10. So if we were to set that one up, we would use 6 and 10, x and x. Because remember, how many times is the geometric mean supposed to show up? It's supposed to show up twice. Okay. So that's, again, a shortcut. Would it be okay to draw out all these pictures? Yeah, go ahead. It would work. Okay. So we said the middle is a spot. We said that outside piece is a spot. Where do you suppose the other spot is that could possibly be a geometric mean on this one? If you had to take a guess, which segment? AC, very good. And the beautiful part about that is that's outside again, isn't it? And it's the same pattern. Take the little piece closest and the whole thing. So is this one that I have set up over here, is that going to work to find that X that I've just written on the board right there? No, what's wrong with the one I have written here? It shouldn't be. It's got a 6, and it should have a 4. So that's the shortcuts in a very quick fashion. Let's try an example and see if it makes sense. All right. So this one here, obviously it is the same picture, so we have a bunch of them. Now, if you want to, obviously it's very simple for me to do something like that, and I'll say, oh, there's all three triangles. But again, you'd have to draw them on your own if that's the method you're going to choose. Okay. I'm personally going to choose to probably stay away from that particular method. But you can draw them in if you want. And let's do that. This is the middle. This is where the geometric mean is. It's the geometric mean of what two numbers? If it's on the inside, it's the just the two little pieces. So, two. Can I put the eight wherever I want, or do I have to be very particular? Yeah, I got to be, and where should it go? Should I go top right, bottom left, bottom right? Where should it go? Bottom right. And then what's going to go here? Well, an X and an X there. So what do we got there? 16 equals x squared square root again houseifies now technically it's positive and negative four right but does negative four make sense in this one no then how come the other day i kept making you write positive and negative well because it just asked for geometric mean right it wasn't saying it's part of a triangle and now it is and so now you would just say the positive four pretty nice shortcut if you can remember it because you didn't have to draw out the triangles. Okay. Any questions on that? Based on what I taught you, why don't you give this one a shot? Same numbers, see what you come up with. 